Welcome to Chillin' with Ice with me, Lori Fetrick, or most of you know me as Ice from the American Gladiators. Thank you for joining me on this podcast where we're going to dive in and go behind the scenes on the number one hit iconic show of the 90s. It's time to get up close and personal on what drove us to be gladiators, what challenges we faced, and how we overcame to reach all of our goals. I know in this first season, inquiring minds want to know, was there drama, fights, hookups? Are we all still friends? What did we do in our personal lives and how are we staying in such good shape years later? Well, stay right here and let's get into Chillin' with Ice. Before we dive into our incredible episode today, I wanna let you know that this is a self-funded podcast and I would love your support. For the cost of a cup of coffee a month, you can donate to my Patreon page and that would make all the difference in the world. For the small donation, you will get back so much in rewards. Like you can watch all of my podcasts on video. I will have exclusive content like behind the scenes footage, a private Facebook group where you can interact with me directly and other VIP fans, a monthly Q&A, direct shout outs and follows from me to you on your social media and so much more. Find me on Patreon at Chillin' With Ice or click the link in the show notes now. Okay, let's dive in. All right, I am super excited to announce my next guest here. Um, this is Shannon Hall, and she's better known as Dallas from the American Gladiators. Dallas will be the recipient for an honorary black belt from the Sport Karate Hall of Fame this August 6th at a huge MMA event um, where she's going to be also inducted into the U.S. Martial Arts Hall of Fame. And I am so excited for you on that. And I'm also very excited that you recently got married. And Shannon, and there you are. You're here, girl. Thank you for coming on. Yay! Hey, girl. You're looking good over there. You look fabulous, too. Shannon's in Florida. She's had a little te technical difficulty today, but she's here, and I'm super excited about having you. First of all, I want to say we don't have anybody here telling us what to do, what to say. I mean, this is ours. This is, this is our podcast, and we can talk about anything in the world, and I am so excited to have you. So thanks for taking time out. And I know you had a flat tire and everything. So but. I just changed the tire and <laughs> I did not look very pretty today. So I you apologize for the technical awesome. shit, but, but I'm a shit show and a mess in a dress. So for me, this is just not even unusual. This is more natural. So anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry to your viewers. It's like, uh, girl, anywho, this is, but I'm just happy to be here with you. This is about you today. I'm this is, girl, this is about us. This is about you. This is about all behind the scenes, all the shit we've ever done. Oh my God, I have so, I do have a couple of fun things that I want to ask you that has really never been asked on podcast. Come on, let's, let's okay. be real on every podcast. The first thing I ask you is what's your favorite event? So Shannon, what is your favorite event? <laughs> you know, let's not, ba let's not break tradition. <laughs> Dude, I, you know what? I don't know. I, I, I don't. I'm sorry, but I don't have a favorite event. I love them all. There wasn't a favorite. I don't know. You liked them all. I don't yeah. To that... be honest with you, I liked them all. I think I was best at um, the Conquer, just because it's wrestling. So I was the best at Conquer, but I loved, just like everybody else, man, we just loved every game and every moment. I can't just say something was my favorite, but probably the best at Conquer because I love to, I love hand on hand, ass kicking combat shit. So can I say shit? You can say anything you want. You can say shit. You can say fuck. You can say whatever girl you want. <laughs> All right. I'll try to keep it PG version, but yeah, sorry about that. I just got to be myself. So no. I was probably best at conquer. I think I enjoyed that the most, but they were all, you know, we loved every game because we got to kick contender ass. Oh, I know. Game. Trust so, me. That was so fucking cool. Okay. So fantastic. just real quick. I mean, you were, you were actually a contestant before you were a gladiator, right? Yes. Okay. Just clarify how that happened real fast. Well, I never got to compete as a contender, but when I tried out um, in Dallas, Texas, that's where I got my name, I was trying out to be a contender. So what brought me to Los Angeles was, you know, congratulations, Shannon, you made the top 10. We want to fly you down to be a contender on the Gladiators. So then I flew down to do that and was a contender coming on the set and the stage. And um, 
they just called me up into the booth that liked my presence, liked my look, liked that I was Southern and offered me the gladiator position instead. They said, well, you're beating up all the gladiators and you're big and you're strong and this doesn't really look good. You don't look right as a contender. So let's switch you as a gladiator. So I was like, well, fuck yeah. So but, that's how that happened. But you, you did go against some gladiators though, right? Um, no, I never did a show as a contender, no. That's right. Ray Hollett came on and did a show and she went up against some of the gladiators and it was kind of weird. That no, was weird. No, I competed. It was me against Ray. Okay. So me and Ray competed against each other. It was the alumni special. That's right. To that's see right. who the top gladiator was right. or whatever. And that came about because I caught her cheating on me with my boyfriend. I said I was going to kick her ass. And I told the producers that <laughs> we're going to fight or do something about it. And they said, well, you know what? Let's settle this on camera. Oh my said, God, that's awesome. Yeah, let's settle this on camera. I never knew that. Awesome. I never knew that. That was awesome. What? No, I didn't. Okay, so Shh. out of all the, uh, let me ask you this. So where, I mean, but listen. We're, but we're good now. That was a really, really bad time. Bad no, time I know. For her. My boyfriend, you know who my boyfriend was, and he's a piece of S-H-I-T. So I blame him and not her, so I'm not trying to talk shit about her. It was just a weird circumstance, and I got I got a bad temper, you know. So that's how, and I love Ray Ray, so I'm not trying to talk shit about it. It's just a circumstance. Okay, let's talk so, about that for a second, just real quick. Where did yeah. you get your strength from? I mean, come on. I've seen you, like, punch a dude in the face. Where did that come from? I mean, were you a little kid when you're, were you beating up kids in the neighborhood? What the hell? How, where did that come from? Well, when I was about, I think about five, somewhere between five and eight, some kid at the apartments called my mom a whore. And I said, what did you say? Call my mom. Okay. I grew up in the hood in Arkansas. Okay. <laughs> so he called my mom a whore and I just wadded up this fist and went boom and knocked him on his ass. And when I knocked that little boy down his ass, this surge of power, I was like, then I realized I had some power and it all comes from my temper. So I have this horrendous temper and I'm a fighter. I've been a fighter since I was born. So it all comes from my strength comes from my adrenaline because like in the weight room, I don't have heavy lifts. I don't have big muscles. My strength is from my adrenaline and my heart because I'm a, I'm a fighter here and that's where it comes from. So, so now let me ask you this question because I just realized this. Somebody told yeah. me this as that is. The new reboot, or not the new, the old reboot of the Gladiators, they had yeah. to go through a 500 question psych test. Do you think any of us would have passed it? Fuck no. Because <laughs> we're all psycho. Hell no. But you know what? That would ruin it because mentally stable Gladiators would not be very exciting to watch. Okay? There would be no, no story, I totally no drama, get it. No emotion. Shit. I totally get it. Oh my God. All right. Yes. So <laughs> let's go here for a second. I mean, you and I, we've been friends for, I figured out we've been friends for almost 30 years. Do you realize that? That's beautiful, Thir man. That's beautiful. And yet we've had our ups and downs. We've had our fights. We've had our love. We, I mean, it's been awesome. And yet we've still remained best friends. And I love that. And, but I think the best part for you and I was when we were at the live show in Orlando, because we of got course. to spend some, we lived together. We wanted to kill each other. I mean, <laughs> well, I was stoned most of the time, so I didn't really give a shit. I know you were. Remember you used to say to me all the time, you'd be like, oh my God, dude, I have to get stoned just to get on your level. What the hell did that even mean? <laughs> because you're so freaking, okay, which hints, this is your name. Okay. Ice. And I know inside you are like, you know, your anxiety goes crazy and you go nuts inside. But on the outside, you are very stable and you are cold as ice in a good way. So for me, we got along so well because I was so unstable and all over the place. Being next to you calmed me down. You were like a sedative for me. So Aww. it's like to actually cross over to communicate with you. I had to get so stoned just to go from la, 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 to <laughs> here. We are talking with Lori Ice. Do you know many trip. wait? Do you know many times we went to uh, the Waffle House after we'd go out dancing and partying all night? We'd go to the Waffle House and you would pour all this syrup on your pancakes and then you would order a chocolate milk. And after you ate all this, you'd be like, oh my God. Oh my God, I think I'm having a heart attack. I might have to go to the hospital. You literally thought you were having a heart attack because you had so much damn sugar in your system that you were having a major anxiety attack. 
<laughs> I know you okay, remember sometimes that. Sometimes that still happens. Okay. <laughs> Yes, it's yes. I didn't really understand anxiety and the caffeine sugar connection at the time. So, <laughs> but you always would let me know what's going on. So you were like the good, you were a good sounding board for me. So it was, it was, it was good. I think I was, I was a jolt of excitement for you. Just the craziness and I would do anything and the Hail Mary shit. You loved that. I did. So, and then I needed your stability just so I wouldn't flip completely the fuck out. So Remem we were a okay, great balance for each other. Remember the time, and I just thought of this just now. We were driving down I-4 in the convertible Mustang, because we always had a convertible. Wait, Whoa. wait, 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 wait. Look look at my car right now. Just look. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's what awesome. What is that right there? <laughs> convertible Mustang. I love it. Okay. Remember we were driving yes. down I-4 and we decided to go topless? <laughs> not until you just said that no oh my god yes i do can you imagine wow. the cars that were driving by and we just didn't care that was so Did much fun yes this is why i love you you're right you take me out of my comfort zone and you make me do crazy shit that i would never in a million years do but you're like come on <laughs> It's like you're free. You, I want to be free and like just do whatever to be free. That's yes. Girl, that your hair it. looks so good. I'm so jealous. I feel so you pretty are right so now. pretty right now. Happy St. Patrick's Happy Day. Happy St. Patrick's Thank Day. Thank you. Do me a favor. Okay, yeah. Describe yeah. um describe the locker room and at the at the live show. <laughs> oh my lord have mercy. Let's go there uh, for a minute. Come on. Let's I mean, talk about you should when never you put alpha females that close together. There you go. No, for real. No, for real. Yeah. Because we're you in know a what? tight room. You, and Shelly, you, you can see who got along and who was clicking together and who wasn't. And um, we just didn't care. But, you know, there was so much love there for us that got along with each other. It was a cool experience, you know, but for like jazz when um she got really mad and had to have her own space and got out of that room that pissed me off that's why we got in that huge fight in the dressing room were you there when we got in that huge fight i was not and i was going to ask you that was going to be the next question i was going to be like was there any drama or fist fights but go for it <laughs> holy fucking shit i remember that um victoria she asked for her own dressing room she said she didn't want to be with us and we or not her type or style or some shit like that. And when Peter told me what she said, why she wanted her own dressing room, she thought she was better than us or whatever. I got really pissed off at that. And she was walking to one of it and I loved her. I mean, we were all, we're all sisters, but as sisters fight, we fought too. And we're just more stronger than most people anyway. But she was walking out of her dressing room, all calm. And we're all stressed out in the dressing room. We got to share our makeup, our hair is a mess. There's no room to get ready. And Victoria was just walking out of her room so calm and collected. <laughs> and I was just really, I'm stressed out anyway. But I was just like, you know what? This fucking sucks. And I said, you know what? You're no better. And I called her out in the hall. I said, you're no better than us. You shouldn't have your own dressing room. This is the biggest bunch of shit I've ever seen. And she whipped those extensions around <laughs> me. She goes, she goes, you don't know what you're talking about. She goes, I'm going to be here way long, way after you're gone. I said, bitch, I'm not going nowhere. I'll be here long, way long after you go. All of a sudden, boom, we beelined it toward each other. Her hair extensions were flying everywhere and just her shit was flapping me in the face so hard. Anyway, we got in a fight and I, I was a fighter. You know, I'm a fighter. I know, I know. So if nothing else, I was a boxer and I got, I don't remember, it was adrenaline rush, but I fucking got some licks in and they ripped us apart. And I'm like, fuck you. She's like, fuck you and whatever. And she left the next week. That was oh it. Oh my God. Yeah. Hey, people wanted to know behind the scenes. Here yeah. it is. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. But we awesome. all, even the guys, we all fight like brothers and sisters. But I mean, it is what it is. And like I said, I'm not throwing nobody under the bus. We're all the same. But, you know, people want to know the stories. And that's the truth. Yeah, that is the truth. But I think, to be honest with you, I think Victoria might have been looking for a reason to leave. I don't feel that she was happy. I don't feel that she thought she was in the right place. I think she was looking for an excuse to leave. And maybe I gave her her excuse to leave. Well, let's be real. The live show was not for everyone in Orlando. I mean, it was like one we of the- partied our ass we, off. Okay. Yes. It was like from the moment we got, we got up in the morning, we laid in the sun, we yes. chilled out that whole day and then we'd get ready and we'd do the live show at night for a couple hours. 
And then yes. after that couple hours, we'd go out and sing karaoke and get wasted and drunk and everything else. We play pool. We played pool, remember? And who had the best karaoke voice? Come on. Not me. <laughs> Dude. I don't know. None of us should have been right. singing. That's all I know. None. So. But I mean, that was the lifestyle. That was it. And so we would be out there for like, you know, a month, two months, three months, something like that. And I don't think yeah. that wasn't Victoria's de- That wasn't her thing. She wasn't in a party and then have, you know, doing that's all that what I'm saying. Yeah. It was it was a different atmosphere. And we got yeah. into it and I called her out and I probably shouldn't have done that. But I was I was going crazy anyway, Lori. You know, that was weird. Oh, totally. Hey, um, can I introduce you to my husband real quick? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, look. Hey, look. Hi. That's Mr. Mateo. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. Very good. Thank you. Very this is good. her talk show, Chilling with Ice. Lori was Ice on the Gladiators. Good. So yeah. we're, here, <laughs> we're here eating ice cream. <laughs> Thank you for letting me uh, steal her away for a little while. That, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and and here's and, here's the other thing about the, the live show, you know, that was so much yeah. fun. Um, I mean, at the beginning, it started out all awesome. Remember, we were rappelling out of the ceiling. We had dancers. And then tell me what it was like at the very end. <laughs> nobody was rappelling. Nobody was dancing. Everybody was crawling out, starving to death. We all lost weight. Or you guys did. I had a knee injury, but right. it whittled down to nothing. Nobody was getting paychecks. You know, we were like, you know, panning for quarters at the front door for paychecks. <laughs> so it went from... All to nothing, but you know what? That was the heart and soul of the show, and everybody loved it so much. They were doing it for free just to keep it going. So, to be honest with you, it was beautiful at the end to see who stayed around and who could, you know, try to keep it going. So, but you know, it was a mismanagement situation, an insurance thing. I guess everybody was getting hurt, and insurance couldn't cover all the injuries. You know, we were just killing people there. Oh my god! So there was nothing to sustain the show. It was just, it was too much. So. I remember, I remember pulling a girl down and somehow her knee got wrapped up in my knee and I literally heard it pop. And it was just like, oh my God. And sure enough, it was another ACL. That right? was a, another ACL. Exactly. That was, that was the main, that was the main injury on the show is ACL tears. It was insane. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There's like a, you see this, the scars there and I tore mine on the show. Oh my God. That is so I tore bad. mine on the show and event, and that's what put me out. And um, I didn't get there. I wasn't there for the last five or six months because I was in the hospital. So now I have a replacement, blah, blah, blah. So, so but yeah, you you fared better than anybody with the injuries and shit from the show. I did. You did really, really good. I got a small meniscus, so. and that was it, a small tear. Okay, so now, so, now, a, so let's do this. You're such a, such a wuss. Come on. Shut the fuck up. So <laughs> <laughs> now let me ask you this. Through... All the gladiator days. Tell me what the coolest place you ever went to. You mean uh, tr- uh, the coolest place I ever did the show? Just no, where you got to travel. Because, you know, we got to do personal appearances. We got to travel. We got to go places. What was the coolest place you went? Japan. Japan. All right. Yeah. How long were you there? Uh, I got to stay there for a week. Uh, and it was called Bang Bang Gladiators in Tokyo. <laughs> no way. So I had my first first class flight on one of those giant, giant airplanes. It's the first time I've ever been on one of those double deckers. And they gave me house shoes. I was being fed sushi. I don't. Even, I was just chilling. I did not want to get off the plane. I wanted to like to live on the plane. So I was like, <laughs> wow, this is amazing. And that's when the budget was good for the show. Oh, my God, and right. My, that really makes a difference. <laughs> the budget makes a big difference on the performance. But anyway, Tokyo was beautiful. I was treated like a queen. The container, everything was just majestic just being there and so far away and it was beautiful there was a piece in japan that i felt there was as a martial artist you know doing some tai chi out there in the park and just doing some kickboxing and stuff there in the park with other people doing martial arts that was pretty badass for me so that was a wonderful experience that's so cool i gave that to you (laughs) you gave that to me thank you i remember i remember i got i i got a call and i got asked to go to japan and i'm going to be very honest I had absolutely no desire to go on a 12 hour flight or however long it was to Japan. I was like, I just, and I was like, Shannon. And you're like, yeah, I'll go. I was like, it's all yours, girl. I did not know that. It's all yours. Thank you so much. What a beautiful experience. Thank you. Okay. So now tell me how you ripped off the side of my car when I was gone. (laughs) Well... Okay. Wait a minute. You were you weren't in there with me? No. I know exactly. Okay, wait. I Dan was so Shannon, stoned. I didn't know how I did it. Shannon and I were living together. 
<laughs> and I would I would fly into Orlando and work for a month, go home a month, work a month, come home a month. And so I was right. living with you. That's so right. I would leave my rent a car with you. I came back and I saw the entire side of it was ripped off. And I literally, I couldn't even believe what I was looking at. And I asked you, I was like, what the fuck? What'd you do to this? You're like, well, do you remember? <laughs> was it going through the, the toll booth to pay things? Yes. I fucking scraped the side off of it on the, on the pay thing and just ran. Okay, this is what you told me. You said that you were going through the toll booth. You realized you were in the wrong toll booth. So you started to back up. And as you backed up, you ripped off the side of the car. And I was like, did you not feel it ripping off? And you're like, nope. No. You were so wasted. And I was just like. I was wasted. I, uh, I'm pretty sure I was wasted. I'm so sorry. <laughs> did I ever say I was sorry or admit it? Okay, well, yeah, this you is did. That yeah, you did. You did. This, this is that moment. Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that apology. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. I love you too. All right. So tell me okay. the coolest celebrity you ever met. Coolest celebrity I ever met was The Rock. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Where'd you meet him? Dwayne Johnson. No. Um, are you, do you mean when I was a Where? gladiator? Or yeah, just... yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess the coolest celebrity I met was Dennis Rodman while I was a gladiator. You remember they came to the show? Were yes. you there when the Chicago yes. Bulls came? Yes, I do. So I they do. came to the show. Scotty Pippen and Dennis Rodman came backstage and wanted me and Shelly to go take them to the hottest club. So we got like in their limo and took Rodman. And uh, I can't remember who was with him. A couple of the other guys. But I think that was the coolest. While it was, I mean, they actually came to the show and came backstage. So that experience was probably the best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The end. <laughs> the end. Okay, we'll leave it right the there. End. We'll leave it right there. Okay. Uh, okay. So in the height of your gladiator career, I mean, we're yeah. at the top. Everybody knows you. Everybody's watching gladiators. What is it that you wanted to do? Like, did you want to go into movies? Did you want to do more martial arts? What was it that you were like, okay, this is what I want to do? You know what, to, to be honest with you, and I don't know if it was like all the drugs or something, but <laughs> like my mind was so free at that moment, there isn't anything else that I wanted to do in that moment, but just be in that moment. That's awesome. Because that was the greatest moment and the greatest feeling that I ever had in my life. So, you know, they say live in the moment during that time, during the show, I wasn't worried about anything. I wasn't worried about the past. I wasn't worried about the future. I was in the moment at all times. So that is exactly where I wanted to be, exactly what I wanted to be doing. And I relished every moment and every piece of that time more so than any other time. So that was probably the best, the best time and the best ability to do that is to just be in the moment. So I didn't want anything else but just enjoying what I had. That is so funny you say that because it's like we can it's like we can think back like when you watch the shows, first yeah. of all, when you watch the when I watch the shows, I, I just go like this oh my God, my body was insane. And I didn't even yeah. realize my body was that insane when I was, you know what I'm saying? You're so critical of yourself, <sighs> Lori. Oh my God. You were the, you are the world's worst on yourself. Holy shit. I you, wish. You're the world's worst. Yes. I literally wish that I had taken a moment and went, oh my God, you look amazing. <laughs> but it okay. was that. Uh, I know. Yeah. I know. So yeah. when you go back and watch the shows and you look at yourself, What's the first thing you think of? Um, when my head was shaved and I was like really <laughs> eating too much bread and I ran out looking like I was six months pregnant, tumbling out there sometimes. Well, what, but you have to understand when we do shows six days a week and there's no time off and you're having the worst period of your life and you got to run out there in this tiny little outfit and you're like bloated all the hell, how the hell I could tumble and do all that shit when I had like a basketball sometimes in there with my periods or whatever like that but yeah, you but know go, what go back on the tv show you looked pretty amazing on the tv show because i was starving myself to death <laughs> <laughs> i didn't eat i did not eat and only tanned so we had tanning with no food and just going 100 percent on adrenaline so so what yeah, was, that's why what was the difference between the tv show and the live show do you think as um, far as like competition TV, backstage totally for different. Me, the live show felt like home and I could really be myself. The TV show was hundred percent makeup, 100% scripted, so much stress and pressure. I feel like everybody was backstabbing each other, all the talk, 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 talk. And I felt like at the Orlando show, we were all a family and everybody was having a good time. 
just chilling. That's interesting. That's it's yeah. interesting how I mean I it's funny because I think of those kind of things, and yeah. it's like when I think of backstage on the television show, it's like. All right. So, you, you know, you do your event and all of a sudden you walk off stage and it's like, you know, you're all smiling and high fiving. And then you walk best stage and it's like, Arr. it's like nobody, you know, everybody went their separate ways. Nobody hung yeah. out like at, yep. the, at the Orlando show. It's like everybody hung out, you yes. know, but in the at the actually yes. television show, everybody went their own separate ways into their dressing rooms. And so it wasn't that much. I mean, it was fun, but it wasn't that much fun. There wasn't like a whole camaraderie type of thing. Yeah. It was a job. You were an actress. They put the makeup on you before you went on the TV show. You were told what to say. And in Orlando show, we were all coming in, like coming in hot. Our hair is not done. Our clothes are all dirty. We threw them on and just around there. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know, so or maybe that was just me. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I no. Mean, it's funny you say that because I watched I watched some of the television shows and I, I listened to some of the things I said. And I yeah. was just like, did I actually say that? It was like, er. <laughs> What what was I thinking? <laughs> you know? we like, weren't. No, we weren't. See, sometimes the best things are when they're spontaneous and impulsive and not thought out or drawn out. And you just just like today. I'm so sorry that I'm here doing this on the side of the road. I think you look I awesome. Home, it's perfect. Put makeup on and the light, but you know what? This is real. This right. is real. And I think sometimes you get your best work when you're not planning anything or no, whatever. That's, right. that's what the Orlando show was, just by the skin of our teeth and the outfits were all fucked up and they didn't look like it was, I don't know. I can't, I don't know what I would have done without that show. My life wouldn't be the same. Our friendship wouldn't be just going to ask you that. I was just going to ask you that. What do you think? Where do you think you would have been or where were you going without the show? Oh my God. I just got really depressed. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I don't don't think I'd be anywhere without the show. To be honest with you, I I have no direction and I have no idea. So I don't know, man. I'm just grateful that it happened. And I don't know. I'm just grateful that it happened. I don't know where I would be without the show or without you or without the lessons I learned and the friendships that I had. But so the show kind of shaved, kind of, kind of like, uh, I don't want to say saved your life because the funny thing is, is I had a question here. Like, what's the most dangerous thing you've ever done? What's the most dangerous thing I've ever done? What's the most dangerous thing you've ever <laughs> done? Uh, going 233 miles an hour on my ZX 11 that I had a power pack on and I was working, I went to motorcycle mechanic school and I had this insane motorcycle and Hobie, my ex-boyfriend said I could never go over 215 miles an hour. That was the fastest that he did. So I had the money and I was doing good. I invested it in that motorcycle and I opened it up going across the Clearwater bridge from, uh, I was going from, um, Orlando to Tampa and uh, Flame was behind me. She She's proof that I did this. Uh, I was on that bike and I'm um, 233 miles an hour. So opened it up. That's I I don't even know how I'm alive right now, but I did it. Wait, wait a minute. Yes, okay, 11, so how fast were you going on the motorcycle when you laid it down going over? I think it was an overpass in Orlando and you and you literally laid it down and you had road rash. Yes. See that on your back, my too. Uh, I was taking that contender girl. I can't remember her name, but I was taking That's her right. home because she had drank too much and I was going over 70 miles an hour. So 70 miles an hour and she passed off and I didn't know what was going on, but she pulled, it's the weirdest feeling when you don't know, understand how your bike's sliding up from underneath you at 70 miles an hour. But yeah, that's it. And all the skins burn off of my arms and elbows and everything. But yeah, and I didn't have a helmet on. I gave her my <sighs> helmet so she'd be safe. And I went down and just tucked and rolled, man. I came out of it and just all the skins burned off and he was in the hospital for a while. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I have a, sp- a thing for speed. So anyway, I yeah, after that, but I gave the bike up after that. Now, see, so. I think we all have a thing for speed, but yet at the same time, there's yeah. always that little twinge in the back of my head that goes, hmm, what would happen if I did this? Maybe I should slow down. It's like that little talk. Yes. And you don't have see, that. that. No. <laughs> you for that's what i have you for you don't have that right here yes laura you're right i am a habitual track of traffic offender by florida i'm a habitual traffic offender but you know what oh my god how many times have you went to jail because of traffic not because of anything else traffic wow (laughs) so look at the sky oh my god i love you you are so funny I had, I do have a need for speed. Yeah. But yeah, thank I God do. I'm alive. I've never hurt anybody or myself. I try to, 
But I mean, look, look at my little, this is my little race car that I'm building right now. Okay. Okay. What are you doing with it? Well, I'm getting it. I'm getting a tune this next month. You put a tuner on it. So I'm going to take the governor off because it caps out at 125. And that's really slow for whatever, when I'm (laughs) racing in Miami, I told you about that. Um, So I'm going to be getting the tuner on it and putting a cold air intake on it, which that's going to give me about with the intake to about a hundred more horsepower. So it's got 320 sitting here. So I'll have over 400 and a couple months horsepower. So that way I'll be a, be a contender with, with the big dog. You know what I, you know what I love about you? You have no fear of dying. You have no fear. (laughs) No, you really don't. don't. You're just like all balls out 100% all the time. And you think I'm that way. I learn from you sometimes. (laughs) You know what? I, I don't, I guess we're all built a certain way, right? We're all built a certain way. And I, my fear is normalcy. I fear having to work a nine to five job, not having these fast cars, not having this extraordinary life, not having a chance to ever be in a movie. And now speaking of that, that leads me to this other thing. When I get inducted into the hall of fame on October the 6th, um, they are filming a martial arts movie at this giant martial arts event. And the director of the film, uh, Gary Lee told me this, the director of film is going to be talking to me when I go there. So finally, this martial arts movie stuff might finally be in my future because now I'm free and clear to do it. No boxing contracts, no gladiator contracts, no kids. I think this is going to happen this year. So that's kind of my focus. That's and awesome. That's nobody to nobody to tell you, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. I mean, isn't that yes, something we have battled our entire fucking life since it's like gladiators has been a wonderful a beautiful experience but yet it's also been a fucking curse you know yeah but you know what that's the way it is Lori. i mean I the energy's got to be big and i mean you got to be able to handle what is there you got to be able to handle the responsibility with the power yeah and you know you you have a really good you you've got your shit together there you know la you, let me look at your beautiful studio you know, I see TV in front of you. I see beautiful things in your future and stuff. And you've paid your time. I paid my dues for certain for this martial arts thing. You've paid your dues to have your own damn TV show. You look so comfortable there <laughs> and you deserve it. You deserve to have the show. You deserve to have all of that. You are LA. You've gone. I know it's all you've had to do to survive. There. Oh my We've God. All had to do crazy shit. Both and of you, us. Just, you deserve it. So that's my wish for you. I, I know who you are and what you're capable of. And you could hold it down. You Girl, can definitely hold it down there. We're both hustlers, man. We hustle our ass hustlers. off. It's like, I miss you so much. I know I miss you too. I still wish you lived here. But I know. Yeah. I know, there's, there's a saying that uh, somebody told me a long time ago. I think it was, oh my God, it was Trinity. Trinity said this to me. If you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much room. Fuck yes. I love her. I know. That's that's so that's so right. And she's always had your back. She's, yep. she was, you're, you, she, for you to me, it was her to you at the time. I know. So tell me, um, let me ask you this. Yeah. So how are you training now compared to the back in the day? How are you training versus when you were a gladiator? You know what? Kind of the same, to be honest with you. Uh, kind of the same, uh, just grinding it all the time. You know, kind of the same, just same exercises, keeping my body. When, you, you know, we look at ourselves in the mirror and we know what we want to train what we've overdone that week and how we need to balance it out the next week. Um, I'm still in the gym at least, at least four days a week, but now I'm training to, to do arm wrestling competitions. So Dan Carr just showed me where Johnny Ferraro is talking with AEW wrestling and they just bought an arm wrestling um, uh, company, not an arm wrestling company, the arm wrestling. Anyway, they're going to be doing TV arm wrestling. Nice. So they're going to have contracted arm wrestlers, just like they had the TV show a couple of years ago. So Dan Carr is now training me to arm wrestle. So now I'm going into the gym. I'm doing all different stuff, like on top of my regular regimen, just to, on top of the regular stuff, just stuff to get my arms strong, get my shoulders strong, get my wrist strong. And I'm going to fuck with, I'm going to, I'm going to fuck with you right now and ask you, is that going to be in the over 50 category? <laughs> yes, it's in the master's category. <laughs> You know what? Yes, it is. And it will. No, and, wait, yeah. you know what? I only say that because of the fact that everybody, I mean, I do hear this on like a lot of my social media, like, oh my God, how do you guys look so good still? I mean, what are you doing with this whole aging process? I mean, look at this. You look amazing. I know your age, you know, my age. And it's yeah. just like when our parents were this age, they were old at this age, but it's yeah. like, 
our it's like what do you what do you do to slow down that aging process well we never stop training and you know the training releases growth hormone and when you do that you know fast switch training and heavy lifting and you have to add some intensity to it it releases growth hormone and also the fasting I'll fast for a couple of days. It's like 48 hours. And when you get to that 48 hours, that autography happens and cell renewal happens. Fasting is probably the very best way to keep yourself youthful looking, to keep your cells regenerating. I'm telling you, fasting for me, man, I have my stomach, dude, I'm telling you, if you research intermittent fasting after two or three days, a whole cell renewal mm-hmm. thing happens and your body resets. So I've discovered fasting that works for me. Everybody's got different shit, but that that's, that's my jam. No, it, I'm you're right. Of- I've, I've heard it. I heard it like heals your body, but dude, I Absolutely. can't go more than six or seven hours. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay, but I got to oh, do it. Get, I got to do you it. You get hangry girl. I know you I got to do angry. it. Where's my cereal. Where's my cereal <laughs> in the middle of the night. Oh my oh, God. Yeah. yeah. That was, well, that, you know, what's funny is I, that was when I was training my hardest and I would yeah. wake up in the middle of the night and I would be hungry from dieting all day. And yes, no, hangry, I, Lori, I, you were hangry. <laughs> it was not hungry. You were hangry and get the fuck out of your way. That's all the, earth oh my God. It, so. yeah, I'll tell you what, April, my girlfriend is worse than I am. It's like, oh my God, we got to feed her, Good. put food now in you her. Have a you. Yeah. I have Good. a me. I have a me. <laughs> Yes. Oh my God. Exactly. All hang right. On, hang on a second, Lori. Go ahead. Mateo, are you dying over there? Are you okay? Tell him to hold on. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Just tell him to hold on. Cause we're almost, I got, I got you. Okay. Let me, let me just, let me just show you this. Who, what, how this. <laughs> look, look what I have every day waiting me. I know. Okay? I'm so happy you, for you. See? I'm so we're, happy we're, for we're you. One month in. We've just been married for a month and it feels like we've been together like forever. It took you a while to get there, but you found it. I didn't find it. He found me. So that's why it's even working. better. Even better. You found me. Okay. He's... You found, you came up to me at Ocean Avenue in South Beach and came up to me and wanted to see my hands and all that crap. Don't even start that. Don't tell me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. Oh my God. Okay. So. Now, let me, <laughs> you're so funny. I miss you so much. I miss we you had too. such a great time on the show. I do. Yes, I, we did. I, I, it feels like yesterday. It literally feels like yesterday that we did that show. And I'm yes. sure that if they did another show. Okay. It, it, this was going to be my question to you. When they did the reboot and they didn't invite us and they didn't want anything to do with, uh, with us whatsoever. What, what was your feeling? What was your thought? Um, well, you know, everybody always blames Johnny for everything, you know, so I don't think it was Johnny. I think it was, I think it was a network, you know, and I, and now that I've gotten to know Johnny and you know, you love him or you hate, you hate him, but everybody has their own relationship with people and experiences. And I think that people change and go a different direction sometimes, some way I'm just saying, um, but I heard, you know, several different things about that. But when I heard that, I mean, me and you and Ray, we went and we watched the show. We were welcomed in we got to go watch a couple tapings of the show and meet the gladiators i thought that was very cool but i just thought hey things have to keep growing and changing and they want new meat new stuff i thought they should have had a gladiator but i mean i don't know for some reason i didn't feel bad about it remember we all sat there and we were like yeah i can't wait to see these chicks and how lean and mean and hard and hungry they are and what they look like and gladiators unchained and they all came out and we were like <laughs> They're like, wait a second. <laughs> and then we started looking at each other. We're like, dude, we could still kick all their asses. So we were disappointed. Yeah, we were looking at yeah. each other going, wait, if this is what's going on, why didn't they put us on there? Right. Because this isn't any better than we are right now sitting here in this chair right, right I know. now. Well, we were disappointed because of that, which once again, that's not their fault. They're picked for the show. I'm not talking shit about anybody. This was just how we felt about I didn't the show. Like- and then we didn't understand. I didn't feel like they were gladiator material, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, some well, like some movie, of them remember? were, some of them were, some of them weren't. Yeah, you know, like actors and actresses playing a part. Yeah, yeah. and it's like, I mean, it just kind of blew my mind. It blew all of our minds. We were just like, whoa, you know. But even like some of these, like uh, the reunions or the reboots or something, they all have a guest appearance. Like, oh my god, right now I was watching. Um, it was called, you know, remember the 70s show? 
Uh, yeah. Okay. What was the reboot um, that they just did? They just, they did a reboot and they brought back Ashton. They brought back all the old players as in guest stars. You know, the yeah. show's going on. But, and then same with 90210, they came in. It's like, they didn't want anything to do with us whatsoever. And that's what kind of blew a lot of people's mind. And it, I mean, we could have just made a guest appearance and they were like, nope, nope. I just, I didn't understand and this, that. And this is, and look, this is classic Lori. <laughs> right now, as we sit and stand, this is Lori right here. You own that show. You own the name. You want your piece of it. You want a part of it. Your heart and soul was into yeah. it. And this is you fighting for your spot on this show and how much that it valued you. You are the show. I mean, I don't know anybody that did any more shows than you. But this is classic. See, to me, for some reason, it didn't bother me. But to you... You have fought for everything oh, it pissed me that off. you have had. Yeah, it did. You fought for every role, every yeah. part, every piece. You you question why, you question how, you question the lighting. You I did so not question TV the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> I questioned Hulk Hogan. You said, <laughs> you said something about, um, I remember seeing that, and it was like a movie set, and it was very different and very dark. There was a lot of water. But you look at the, um, how you make a show, the direction of the show. You look at all aspects of the show. And so you're the show meant that much to you. You wanted to fight to still be a part of it. And I respect you for that. And I think that's, that's a beautiful part of you. And that's just like how you're sitting there. I want to do this. And why didn't they do that? They should have had it. You're right. You're right. I know. I know. Yeah. You're right. It is what it maybe is. You can, maybe you can redo the show one day. It is what it is. Look, yeah. this is the cool thing now is we get to do whatever we want right now. You know what I'm saying? We've got a lot going on. You've got a lot going on. Super excited for you. Thank um, you. I mean, both of our documentaries are coming out this year. I mean, we don't know when, but they are. <laughs> Ten years later. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, look at Ash Lori. All right. The, the senior citizen about. gladiators. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. All right. Oh, my God. I'll tell you what. I'm going to wrap it up with you. But one last question. Okay. So Shannon, tell me about the time when we were at our condo, we were laying in the sun, asses up, and all I looked at you and I started laughing. What tell that story? <laughs> I love so it. So we were laying at the pool and like this, we're on our stomach, and there was a hedge that was like for privacy around the pool. But below the hedge there was a little clearance, probably about this much, about as tall as my hand. So we saw this pair of feet about probably 10 feet away or 15 feet away. And I don't remember if the pants were down around the ankles. I just remember seeing the feet just, just to get it just like this. Motherfucker was jerking off <laughs> to us because his toes were pointed in our direction. I couldn't see his face, oh but my his God. legs and feet were just going. to. <laughs> Girl, why did and that always happen to us? <laughs> but you know what? We just looked at each other and it was just like another afternoon at the pool <laughs> no i remember i oh said God. something i remember i said something i was like what the fuck and you're like no don't say anything if you laugh at him it's going to be more humiliating than getting mad at him <laughs> i'm like Lori, he'll be finished in just a minute <laughs> <laughs> but then again you know what hey think about it this way a i mean i think back on what her asses looked like back then and i mean i don't blame him <laughs> i would have jerked off to our asses too back then holy shit <laughs> Yes. Oh, my right? yeah, pretty, oh my yes, god right oh my god i'm sorry i had to throw that story in that, that was, was awesome see, like that kind of shit i mean that shit doesn't happen every day no and we had so much fun together and you're right without gladiators it our 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 friendship probably wouldn't have survived all these years and i'm just so happy you're in my life and that you did Me my too. podcast thank you so much all right so tell oh. everybody where they can find you uh, my Instagram is knockout underscore artist Shannon at knockout underscore artist Shannon. So that Perfect. is my business website. That's my martial arts website. And I put them both together just to keep me focused more on having content, not just showing, look how pretty I am or look at, look at my boyfriend. It's like, look at what I'm doing. I support the arts because they're giving me the biggest honor and I feel like I should give back to the arts. And then you're going to become a, a martial arts um, superstar, superstar television, <laughs> television film. That's awesome. 
so happy I think for that's, you. I think that's it. So maybe you can help me with some acting and we'll go back and forth and you, you tell me if I suck or not. Bitch, I want to be on the movie with you. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. We can do yes. some fight. Well, okay, real fast. Remember we went to the actual stunt. Uh, uh, Glenn was teaching us how to do stunts and everything. Back in Florida, we God. were doing some high falls and shit. And repelling. We've done a lot of stuff. We've done a shit Remember ton of stuff. Remember that Wild West show? Remember the Wild West stunt show? Oh my God, yes. See? That's another podcast. Oh my God, that's a whole nother podcast. That's exactly. Another, you're such a slut, Lori. Does everybody know what a big slut you were? Oh, sorry. Not yet. <laughs> that's another podcast too. That's about you. Hey, thank you so much for doing this with me. This is awesome. And I'm like I said, apologize for being just half ass, but thank you for having I love me. It. I, really I wouldn't it. have it any other way. This is you. This is Shannon. And I love you. And thank you so much for being here. And uh, that's it. All right. Peace out, baby. I love you. I love you. Miss you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for listening to Chillin' with Ice. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share wherever you listen to your podcast. Remember to follow us on Patreon and YouTube at Chillin' with Ice. And on Instagram and TikTok, you can follow me at lori.ice.fetrick. I look forward to chilling with you next time here on Chillin' with Ice.